Destin and the surrounding area are known for their awesome beaches. If you've ever visited, you may have thought about living here. Well, at least for part of the year. Short-term rental demand remains strong in Destin, and many out-of-state owners use it to cover their costs to own here. 2023 is upon us, and it's a bit complicated. Is it a good time to be buying a vacation home in Destin? Well, let's talk about it. Hey guys, Eric Lighton, Emerald Coast Abode, real estate agent with Real Broker Servicing from Panama City Beach to Destin, Florida, part-time gopher at What's Up Beach Vacation Rentals. And today, we're going to try to wrap our heads around this 2023 market and to understand if this year is a good time to buy a vacation home in Destin, Florida. So the first thing we should do to answer the question at hand is take a look at some of the market analytics. A lot of people from out of state look at Destin and the town right next door, Miramar Beach, as the same town. So we're gonna throw in Miramar Beach into our analytics. The first table we got here is the city of Destin comparing January 2023 data versus the market data in January 2022. And we have four metrics we are looking at. Inventory in months, average sales price, average days on market, and the median days on market. Starting with inventory in Destin, we've had an increase of 142.86% looking at January versus January of last year. So now we have almost three months, but last year we've only had about a month of inventory. So moving down the list, the average sales price has decreased by 6.67% and the average days on market have increased 61.9% while the median days on market increased 228%. I like to look at the median days on market because that's more representative of the middle of the market. Inventory has gone up, listings are sitting longer, and this is putting downward pressure on the sales prices index. So moving on to Miramar Beach, which is just across the county line and the township directly over from Destin. So this is pretty much the same story. You see inventory has increased 161.5%. The average sales price is the only deferring item that has actually increased 13%. The average day on market still increased 43% and the median middle of the market increased 142.86. So in Destin, we had 40% less listings sold this January and 34% less pending listings versus 2022. And in Miramar Beach, we had 60% less sold listings and 58.8 .8 less pending listings. So sales volume is way down. Interestingly, the average sales price has increased in Miramar Beach where it's gone down quite a bit in Destin. The average sales price does not mean that prices are falling across the board. It's simply a cross section of the type of inventory that people are buying in that month. Miramar Beach is slightly different. It's a little bit of a newer market and more single family centric than Destin. It could be that there were more deals on single family homes and higher price points that were selling and more representative of the January mark. Overall though, the metrics create a little bit of a gloomy picture. We have quantitative tightening and that is putting downward pressure on sales and prices. But not to get all doom and gloom, there are some positives that could be taken away from our current situation. Well, number one, this time last year, I would consider it a real estate boom. It's not typical for the winter time frame in Destin and along the coastal market here to be in a sales frenzy. It's typical to be a little slower in these months. This time last year, we were dealing with a lot of multiple offers. So the first pro of buying in Destin this year is that there's less multiple offer scenarios, putting buyers in precarious positions to maybe overextend themselves. The second pro to buying your vacation home in Destin in 2023 is that there are more negotiations 
for repairs, for upgrade concessions, and for appraisal contingencies. Last year this time, many buyers were waiving their appraisal contingency to offer something more competitive. Well, now that the market is chilled, we're back to business as usual and sellers have to take appraisal contingencies and that's assurance that you're not paying over market value for your property. All right, and the third pro to buying your vacation home in 2023 is that you have leverage to negotiate the price more. This time last year, multiple offers, waiving all contingencies. So are these really pros? Well, don't just take my word for it. Let's look at some powerful analytics that really tell the story here. So what this is, what percentage is the sold price compared to the list price of the property? And what this shows is buyers negotiating power within a market. So for January this year, in Destin, buyers were negotiating 6% down from the list price to a 94% list to price ratio. In Miramar Beach, buyers were across the board negotiating down 8% to a 92% list to price ratio. That negotiating power is much higher than it has been in recent years. All right, so we talked about the pros of buying in Destin in 2023. Now we have to talk about the cons or considerations in this case. So there's one overarching theme to the cons and that term is going to be affordability. So in Destin and Miramar, we've seen that the post-COVID appreciation has mostly remained intact. There is a little bit of downward pressure on the average prices. And I did the disclaimer that average prices aren't indicative of the true market value. It's just a cross section of what's been selling in that month. So with the prices and that appreciation, you know, remaining intact, prices are still up there for the most part. And rates are definitely higher than they were last year the rates and the quantitative tightening create some pressure on affordability. The second factor that creates pressure on affordability is inflation, quite obvious. Everything from toilet paper for your rental to a new roof to your handyman expenses has gone up. The cost of living has been ratcheted up across the board, groceries, etc. This raises the cost of everything else, so something to be aware of. Now, the third one is going to be specific to condos on the beach in Destin and in Miramar. There are a good handful, but there's also a good handful of single family residences in this area. So single family is not much of a concern, but just know if you're buying a standalone house that you, the homeowner, are gonna be tasked with keeping up with all the components, new roof, stucco, all of those items are on your shoulders to make sure everything's being maintained in a timely manner. So there is new condo legislation, it's called SB4D, and it requires a new set of inspections to be done with reserve studies, and the new set of inspections is going to focus on structural integrity of the building. And they're also increasing the timeline or making the timeline quicker for milestone inspections as the building ages. And then the third and final component to SB4D is that they're making it mandatory for associations to fully fund the reserves called out in the reserve study, uh, meaning that they have to have their account fully funded to take care of the projected component expenses that need to be swapped out in that given year before associations had the option to defer it. So with that all said, SB4D puts upward pressure on condo associations or those HOA dues that you are paying in a condo situation. All right, so as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, many homeowners in Destin, they use short-term rental income to offset their expenses. Well, since the post-COVID boom, prices have gone up and that appreciation has mostly remained intact. And that puts the affordability into fringe territory. So now, in 2023, the most important thing a buyer can do is research the short-term rental capability. Do your market research. Make sure that the property that you like has the characteristics of the top performers within the market, 
and then take it from there. You'll have a good idea of what that top line revenue could potentially look like if ran appropriately. Okay, now we have identified the property that looks like the top performers in the market. We've looked at the rental analysis of those top performers, so we feel pretty confident of what that top line rental number is. Well, now it's time to calculate if the property that you have your eye on makes sense, it's affordable for your situation, and you're not gonna overstretch yourself and be in a dire financial predicament for buying this vacation home. So what I like to do in this instance is run a simple analysis. It's called Foursquare Analysis. I didn't make this up, but I do a pretty good job applying it in the short-term rental space, and it's super simple. It's four squares or four components, and I'm gonna break those down to you very quickly here. So our top line item is our income, rental income. So that's square one. Square two and three are your cost components. So square two is your cost to own. That's gonna be things like your insurance, your HOA dues, taxes, utilities. The third square is your mortgage expense. That's gonna be your principal, and you know there are some intermingled cost to own with your escrow account. I know so you pay your taxes and your insurance through your mortgage. Put those two together, subtract it from your rent, and then you'll have some metrics and have a better understanding of your profitability. Some metrics that I like to look at are your cash flow number one. You wanna know that you could cover your bills and have a little money left over for somewhat of a maintenance reserve. Uh, I think that's critical on single family homes. You can dial that back a little bit on condos. Condos are basically maintaining the studs in. Then there's something called a cap rate. So what this is, is your net operating income, basically your rental income minus all the expenses, and put that in a ratio against the purchase price of the property. You know, I'd like to see what, what's available, what type of cap rates are running in the local market. And I think that there are a lot more benefits to purchasing real estate than just the cash flow. Cash flow is huge because that does factor into the affordability. But I think that if you're mirroring what you can do annualized in a diversified portfolio in the stock market, you have a cap rate within the 7% range that's definitely a property worth looking at. Um, so the final metric is cash on cash return. It's basically like what you put in as far as like a down payment on a loan. What is your sunk cost in terms of cash into the property versus that net number? And that will give you a cash on cash return. So those are some of the three elements of profitability that I like to look at. Okay, concluding if 2023 is a good time to buy a vacation home in Destin. So we have some analytics for January. We've seen a cross section of the market of how this year is starting. In January, I'm making this video in mid-February, so we have January CPI, and that number was higher than expected. And also, jobs are still hot. Unemployment is super low. So there is still pressure on inflation. So there may be pressure on this federal funds rate. Does it exactly correlate with mortgage rates? No, but it is a prime factor of why mortgage rates have risen to the level that they have. Will mortgage rates remain high? I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball, but I know that there is an expectation for inflation to come down for over the next 12 months. And we may see a little bit of easing in these interest rates then. Once rates come back down, the market could heat up and we could be in another position where we're in a pretty substantial shortage. You saw the inventory levels on the January sheets that I have. In Miramar Beach and Destin, there's about three months of inventory, give or take. That's still pretty low. Even in the, I think one was higher, maybe trending towards four, we still are in a low inventory situation regardless of demand being dampened to the point that it is. So it's a real possibility if interest rates drop on home mortgages that we'll see another case where we're short in the real estate supply, we're back in multiple offers, no contingencies. So with that said, 
given the current situation that we're in where demand is diminished a little bit, you have more bargaining power. So a case could be made, certainly, for buying in 2023 than waiting it out. And my opinion on the matter is that you can never time the market. There's no perfect time to buy or sell. It's important to make sure that this is a long-term decision. Because yes, we are in uncertain economic times, but do not put your life on pause if this is something that you really want to do. There are avenues, as mentioned in this video, to make it happen. If you're going to be stretching yourself within the purchase price of Destin, but you still want to be down here and have your place at the beach with your family, there are other markets. Panama City Beach, Navarre, Fort Walton Beach, those are some areas that you could consider. They share the same white sand that's in Destin. Now with that said, affordability is important. And yes, we do have higher mortgage rates than there was last year. That's why the diligence side of this equation is very important. Now, there's definitely opportunities out here that are more affordable than others. And there are rental income producers certainly still in Destin. It's a very short-term rental friendly market. If Destin's where you want to be and you're going out of your way and putting, exercising this much diligence, your personal time and capital into this market, Make sure it's for the long term. Your chance of succeeding will be greatly increased if you hold the property. This is Eric Lighton, Emerald Coast Abode, wishing you well. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. All my contact information is in the description below. Please, if you enjoyed this content, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to come out with more real estate data driven content at least bi-weekly so subscribe and stay tuned thanks for watching